Hey, how you doing? I'm Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comics, member of Comics Gate. This is another Secrets of the Comics Gate Network, and this one deals with how do you deal with printers? Um, I've had a lot of creators who are new in publishing uh, reach out to me and say, hey, you know, uh, this printer is telling me this, and how do I find a printer, and what's a good printer, and what do I need to worry about? Um, and do you know any good printers? Uh, and, you know, having published a thousand comics, I've dealt with um, not a thousand printers, but probably about, um, I don't know, definitely more than 10, probably 20 different printers uh, over the decades. And uh, they teach you a lot, let's put it that way, having done a lot of these things. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and discuss this. We'll go over it. I'll give you some feedback on this. And you can always feel free to ask me some uh, individual questions. Uh, put uh, questions in the comments below. Uh, tell me what some of your experiences are uh, and they've been. And if you have any questions, definitely put them in there. And also definitely subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. I do a lot of these uh, comics gate industry experience uh, types of videos. So this way you kind of get an insight on what's going on. All right. So uh, the first thing I like to talk about here is I want people to understand that there's a lot of differences uh, between digital printing and offset printing. Um, and some people probably know what digital printing is, know what offset printing is, um, web printing and things like that. You don't need to know a lot about this, but just to understand the basics. Digital printing uh, is a new technology and a digital printing is something where uh, they don't have to do a lot of press setup. It's very good for short run printing anything from uh, one copy to 100 copies to up to 500 or sometimes 1,000 copies. Uh, usually when it's 1,000 copies or more or um, 1,500 copies in that zone, a printer, uh, offset printer is usually better. Uh, an offset printer is really like a traditional printer. And offset is their process of printing where it's uh, usually printing on, it's printing on set sheets of paper. So these are larger sheets of paper uh, where they're doing usually, um, what is it, say six, uh, anywhere from eight to 16 pages on one side at one time. But it goes through what you would think would be a big traditional printing press machine. Usually digital printing is smaller. And uh, another interesting thing about digital printing is when they put the covers to the interiors, a lot of times digital printing is done what's called in line. Uh, an inline meaning just that it's all one finished piece when it comes out of the uh, printing machine already printed, cut, ready to go. Does that matter a lot? It doesn't matter a lot, um, but it can matter sometimes. It's just good to have a basic working knowledge. So in most cases, if you're doing a comic with less than a thousand print run, um, by all means, it's going to be more cost effective to go digital printing. In terms of quality, you can ask a printer for quality samples so you can kind of compare the quality uh, differences for yourself and, um, you know, see if it makes any kind of, um, you know, difference to you. Uh, mostly when you're using a high quality digital printer, um, and I recommend uh, Mixam. We've heard really good things about them. I will link to them in the description. They've printed for a number of Comiscape publishers who really like their high quality color work. Um, you know, we, you really will not notice much of a difference. Mixam is um, a printer that will print uh, in high quality in digital, and they will also offer you, if your quantities start to get high up there, uh, say past uh, 1,000 copies, they'll offer you on their online calculation quotes uh, offset as well. So you'll kind of get to choose, well, would I want to print it digital or offset? You can always call them and ask them for specifics as well. Um, so they'll do both. Some printers do do both. Not all printers do both. You can ask the printers, hey, do you do digital printing as well as um, offset printing or web printing? Web printing means it's just printed on a big roll of paper. Usually web is higher run than uh, offset, um, 3,000 plus. Um, and web is not usually as good quality as offset. Uh, it can be, but it's not usually. Traditionally, that's like your newsprint type of printing. Uh, when I say newsprint, I'm not referring to uh, any publisher in particular. I'm just saying like when you get newspapers. So usually it's just very much of a commodity printing, but there can be very high quality newsprint as well. You look at the samples. 
This leads me into one of my main points here. And my main point really is print with a printer who knows comic books, who is already printing comic books, who's printed comic books from people whom you know. Do they print Marvel's comics? That would be bigger print runs. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver uses a printer in Canada. Uh, he mentioned on a stream this morning, and um, uh, they are very well-known printer. They print um, for DC Comics. They print for big companies. I've printed with them before. Um, so they're a good example. But that's that's for doing, let's say, you know, you reach out for a company like that if you're going to do 5,000, 10,000 copies. Um, but in most cases, you're dealing with smaller printers, and a smaller printer like Mixam is a great little printer for offset or for uh, digital. Okay, um, so number one rule though really is do not under any circumstances use a printer who has not printed comic books before. It's completely unnecessary, okay? You're not gonna find a printer that none of us know about. We're all, there's 50 to 100 of us that are actively buying printing. We all know who the good printers are. So don't think that you're, if you come up with someone, Ask me about it. Ask some other experienced Comicsgate publisher about it. Say, hey, what do you think of this printer? Um, they've never done comics before. And let us help you check them out. Because in 99% of the time, if you go with a printer who's not printed comics, you are running a ton of risks and all sorts of things can go wrong. Because when you say you want to get a comic book printed and you think they know what you're talking about, it doesn't mean that they know what you're talking about. Uh, they could use the wrong paper. They could be very uh, careless about packing them in boxes because um, when you're printing comics, you're expecting them as a buyer to be delivering a collectible. When they're printing comics, unless they have a comics experience, they think they might be printing uh, the same thing as a booklet or a catalog or a magazine. They don't know you're printing a collectible. They don't know that it can't be dinged or that it has to be like cut absolutely perfectly, right? So you're not communicating to a printer who doesn't know comic books properly when you say you want to print a comic book. They don't know exactly what you mean by, I want to print a comic book. You also don't know what their last comic book is that they saw. Maybe they saw one beat up one on a rack that was printed on newsprint in the 1970s, and they're going to give you something equivalent to that. So you don't, you don't need the extra hassles and mystery in your life. You know, use Mixam, you know, use uh, API Productions as another one. Although truthfully, I've heard they're more expensive than Mixam. So uh, that, that's up to you. You can message me if you have questions about that, but don't fall into this uh, trap. Um, they won't know that you're trying to produce collectibles and that you must deliver a collectible. So you're asking them to deliver something that they're completely unfamiliar with, all right? Um, if you're gonna print in color, make sure that they've printed in color and that they can show you some samples or they can be highly recommended, highly recommended by one of us. Comicsgate's a big enough network now. You can ask me, you can ask any number of us, hey, do you have a printer that you had good success with or could you recommend a good printer? Um, you know, use someone that's recommended because if you're not, you're taking chances. And what the heck are you doing that for? It's completely unnecessary. If you're going to take a chance in life or in business, there's got to be a payoff, right? So don't take a chance for no reason. The fact that they might be one hour away from you, maybe you could save on shipping the books to you. Frankly, that's not necessary. All right. I don't want to be disparaging here, but let me just say it's not necessary. It's not that expensive to physically ship books. We'll get the, get the quote. I'm going to give you the link for uh, Mixam, and you're going to be able to go on their online calculator, and that'll give you a quote. It includes shipping. Okay, you can get shipping quotes from them. Print Ninja also offers it to you. I don't personally. I don't agree with printing overseas if you can avoid it. Um, there's horrific things going on right now in China, uh, with, unfortunately, with um, illness, uh, and there's a slower turnaround time. There's all sorts of problems in China. You can print in the U.S. and you can do it very affordably. Um, and even if it's a little bit more money, you get a, a much quicker turnaround time and they will not be any virus attached to it. I mean, what, what else can I say? Um, but in any event, you can get an online printing quote from Print Ninja as well. I do like online calculators so you can kind of look at the cost differences. 
All right, um, one thing you need to know about is uh, about bindery. This is another issue with using a printer that knows comic books and graphic novels, because um, when they're doing bindery, what they're doing is they're putting the cover together with the body of the book, the interiors, right? They have to fold it, they have to cut it. If it's saddle stitch, meaning as if there's staples in it, it needs staples in it, okay? Most of these uh, comics should have two staples in them. There are some very thick ones. Uh, I think Ethan Van Skyver's Cyberfrog has three staples in it because the damn thing is such a big book and he's attaching the chromium cover to it. But if a comic book doesn't have two staples pre uh, placed in the correct place, it doesn't look right. It's not going to feel like a real comic book. So again, that's why you use an existing comic book printer that knows what they're doing. Another thing uh, printers who don't do comics will do for bindery is they'll put they'll glue it sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't look right, okay? It's not a comic book. So so don't use someone who doesn't already know comic book printing. If you're making it perfect bound, meaning if it's going to be square bound, if it's going to have a spine that you're going to uh, print on the spine, um, you need to also use a printer that does comic books and graphic novels. There's a lot of different ways of doing that. Many. Okay. You need to know what a finished product is going to look like. Another advantage, by the way, of some of these digital printers like Mixam is you can order one copy from them as a proof. Uh, Vinny Tartamella does this all the time. His current campaign is through the woods. Um, but he's been printing and delivering books all along. And one of his secrets is he uses Mixam. It's no secret. He told the rest of us about them. And a lot of us have gone to them afterwards. Uh, but you you can go ahead and order one copy if your files are ready. You know, if your art and editorial, if your art and editorial is ready, if you're ready to print now, you can send them uh, your files online, order one copy. It's like $25, not very cost effective. Uh, you know, if you were going to just print them one at a time, but once you print 50, 100, 250, they give you a discount. But to just print one to see what it would look like and what the paper choices are, you can do that. So what a great way to work, right? Speaking of uh, files, all right, moving on to another really important thing. File format, specifications, pre-press details. You need to know all of that, all right? Um, sometimes printers are very nice and you can give them just about anything to work with. Um, back in the day, we used to throw our stuff in a box. <laughs> it's early on, you know, dealing with printers, we would throw our, our pages in a box. And my attitude would be like, well, you know, they're not paying me to, to make it neat for them and organize. So the hell with these guys. Um, I'll just throw it in a box and, and let them figure it out. That's their job. Um, you know, that was a little bit immature. Uh, and I was young. Um, and we did used to send them a lot of business, but the owner of the printing company at the time called me up and he said, Hey, Adam, I'll tell you what. And I was like, Hey, what? And he's like, I, I'll give you a 2% discount. If you just put this in like a really neat, clean order and don't just throw it in the freaking box. And, uh, so that's what I did. And, and we did get the discount and, um, you know, it's very nice of him to give us the discount, but that, that's not really necessary. You know, you respect the people that you work with and you also want a quality job, right? So you give, find out what they want, find out what's ideal for them. Not every printer is the same. They work all a little differently. Yes, people do like PDFs, but see, see what they say. You know, let me see your pre-press specifications. And if you have questions, ask them, but don't expect them to fix your work and be like, well, I'm a big shot. I'll do it my way. No, you you do it the way that they need it so that you're going to get a quality job. I don't know anything about the pre-press uh, requirements for Mixam. I've heard nobody complain about it. So it sounds like it's pretty damn easy to work with. But you are going to, if you do things in the proper way, you're going to get the best results. And, and that's what you want here is results. And I'm going to scare you for a second. So get ready. It's going to be scary. Richard Meyer's Jawbreaker's book there were problems with the pre-press files and it didn't print as well as it should have. It affected the quality of his book. And that man went through a lot to be able to get his book printed and distributed a lot. It took him a lot. It was a big, big project for him. And he wasn't able to deliver it at the level that it was produced at because the files were wrong. Well, obviously 
you know, Richard Meyer is a great guy and he learned his lesson and he produced a, a reprint of it in even better quality, uh, revised edition or whatever it was. He fixed the files. But, you know, it doesn't have to happen. It's, it's a non-necessity. It's just something that was a lack of experience going into the game. I made a mess of uh, a lot of my early first projects back in the day. Um, and, and it wasn't a mess or anything. Drawbreakers is still a beautiful book and launched an empire. Um, but at the same time, find out what they need for pre-press files. Don't just send it in uh, and, and hope that uh, they can figure it out and then get disappointed or angry when they don't do it properly. All right, so, so do it properly in advance by communicating with the printer. Uh, a lot of them will just have it on their website. All right, uh, another issue about pricing. Get pricing in advance of printing. Don't print anything without knowing what the, what the price is. Don't, ex even if someone's like friendly with you and they say, listen, don't worry, we'll work it out later. Whenever you're committing to do something, uh, you want to know what the price is. You have to know what the price is. All right. Or I will be very mad at you. It's totally unnecessary. It creates a complete miscommunication. Now, there are online printers. I know I keep mentioning Mixam. It's just that Mixam has one bad thing about it. And I'll tell you later towards the end. It'll be suspenseful. Something I do not like about Mixam. Um, but they have a lot of great things about them. The fact that they give you prices up front is great. Not every printer has online calculators. Why don't they? Well, for one thing, it takes programming. For another thing, it has to be constantly updated. Um, for another thing, because of price competitive things, they don't want their competitors knowing what their prices are because then they have to lower them. Um, price wars uh, are not profitable. Um, so that's why they don't do it sometimes. But if you're going to print with a printer that doesn't publish their prices, you got to have the quote from them in writing that discusses all the specifications before you agree to move forward with the project. You're not doing them um, any favors to not have the prices. Secondly, I'm going to recommend you do not do not look for what we call net 30 terms or payment uh, after the book is printed, like a week later, three weeks later, two months later. There are printers that, you know, when they deal with publishers, they understand that if they give a publisher 30 days to pay the bill, usually the publisher does pay. And when the publisher uh, has that extra 30 days to pay, a lot of times the publisher can use that as working capital to grow their business. Um, we did that back in the day. We did it a lot and we use it a lot to grow our business. That's how we kind of went from zero to um, 35 employees with a in-house staff, like within our first year and a half of uh, like we had a studio artists, every, everything was done inside in the office and uh, we did it on no money. We just really built it up on the credit, but credit can get ahead of you. And it did with us sometimes and it caused problems. The bottom line is, if you're doing Comicscape books, you're getting paid in advance by the creators, uh, by the fans, excuse me. Um, so if you're getting paid in advance by the fans, why the hell would you need all that extra time? Now, that said, be careful about who you're paying. We know Mixam knows their thing, knows their stuff. Transcontinental is a good printer. They're based out of Canada. Uh, I want to reach out to them. I will. I'll, maybe I can get us good pricing as a group somehow. Uh, I, I used to work with them a little bit with that in the past. See what I can do. Quebecor is another good printer. I, I, I don't know if they're working with small companies. Frankly, I don't even know what the heck they're printing these days. Uh, but it's another uh, Canada-based printer. But in any event, um, you don't want to have a printer and then get involved with like borrowing money from them on uh, credit. Ideally, you would pay a printer on delivery. So it's like, all right, well, hey, Adam, we just printed your uh, 6,000 copies of um, whatever it is, College of the Dead, uh, Graduation Day, the new color comic. Um, will you please pay us? Yes, here you go. Here's the money. However, um, you know, a lot of printers will, uh, if they're like Mixam, they want to be paid when you place the order. They usually turn your order around within a week. There's really nothing wrong with that if it's a printer that is recommended by other Comiskate guys. If it's a stranger, don't prepay them. At best, pay them on delivery. But frankly, it really shouldn't be a stranger because a lot of us have experience with a few printers you know, reach out to us and, and ask. API Productions also a credible printer, just more expensive than Mixam. Um, okay, uh, just just be careful with that. Don't play money games with printers. You know, and and uh, there was a printer, not Print Ninja, but a company that split off from Ninja called uh, Print Ninja called. Uh, when I say split off from, 
a guy who used to work for uh, Print Ninja started his own print brokering company. And that's what they are. They're brokers, meaning they buy and sell printing. They don't own printing plants, uh, Print Ninja. And the other company's name was Kraken Print. And um, a couple of us comic skate guys, um, I think Gilbert Diaz is one of them, a uh, nice guy. Uh, anyway, they were working with this Kraken Print. And um, they were prepaying them. And it turned out that uh, they got ahead of themselves, crack and print. They lost control of the business somehow, and they went out of business. So you could actually, you know, pay your printer and not get your books. It's not impossible. It does happen. I don't think it ever happened to me. I've always been kind of sharp like that. But still, uh, it could happen to you. It does happen, to especially small guys that don't understand, you know, some of the intricacies of um, how these companies work. Print Ninja, is, as far as I know, is a stable company. But, you know, it's another reason why I don't want to send my books to a printer. And honestly, I don't want you to send your books to a printer and wait, um, you know, three months to get your books or something. How do I know it's happening in the, in the period of three months? Frankly, how does Print Ninja even know what's happening in, in the duration of three months? I, they could be sharing files back and forth. They have no control of what's going on in China, obviously. It's its own world over there in China. So a nice one-week turnaround time from a printer in Canada or the United States, really preferable. But but and see what makes sense for you. I'm just saying it has happened that print brokers have disappeared with people's money before. And it's it's very unfortunate because how do you take care of your backers then? Then you're in trouble. So so just be very careful to know that you got a credible printer and that you have a reasonable turnaround time. Um, with respect to prices, prices uh, are not really negotiable. They're not really. Uh, the easiest way to negotiate prices if you want a better price, and you should get the best price you can, is go to one of the online calculators like Mixam, get their quote, and give it to Transcontinental. You know, give it to another printer, API Productions, and say, hey, this is my specifications from Mixam. This is the online quote I got from them. Can you match it? Can you beat it? I'd love to work with you, but hey, I don't know. You're over Mixam's price. Give me a break here, okay? Um, you can do that. It's not unethical. It's not unreasonable. Uh, you can get a price. It doesn't have to be their online calculator. You can get a price from someone, obviously, give them the specs by email or over the phone. They give you a quote. You share it with someone else and say, hey, can you match this price? Um, that's a normal thing that people do in business. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so like for someone that wants to print with another printer or try out a printer, please don't try out a printer that hasn't done comic books and has a reputation for it. But if you do, if you must, or an existing printer, um, there's another printer, Brenner Printing, used to work with them a lot years ago. Um, you can give them McSam's quote, uh, and say, Hey, can you beat this price? If they don't already have a price list, but you understand what I'm saying, you can utilize a, a, a printing quote and get yourself a little leverage and see if somebody will match it, okay? Don't expect the printer is going to always give you their best price up front uh, or their lowest price up front. Pretty much Mixam already does, but most printers without an online calculator, they don't really give you their best price up front. Uh, not because they're trying to harm you, just because they're trying to make money, all right? Uh, I know API is a very reputable company. They just happen to be a little more expensive, at least up front, without negotiation, um, than uh, Mixam is. Um, variant covers. All right, this is this is the thing I was going to tell you about Mixam that is not as strong as um, some other printers. The way Mixam is structured, uh, okay, they have multiple printing operations in multiple countries. They print uh, out of the United States and in Illinois. They print out of Canada. They print out of the UK, and they print out of Australia. The way they work with printers is they have a very close relationship with a the printer. They don't, necessarily, they don't actually own the facility. They're kind of like brokers, um, but the quality is very high and they deliver what they promise. So if you're based in the UK and you're going to physically sign all your comics, you would uh, print them out of the UK with Mixam. They, they have different prices um, you know, in local currency for you, for wherever you're located. And then you would ship them yourself out of the UK, for example. Or Australia, same thing. The United States, obviously, same thing. But the, because of the way that they're set up, they treat every job differently. And they're not interested in giving you a price break. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday about this. He has a thousand copies he needs to do of a color book. Um, 
bigger than 48 pages, and he's got four different covers. Well, Mick Sam will give them a decent price, but they won't give them a great price, uh, probably, because they treat every different cover as its own unique job. So they're not going to give you a price based on a thousand copies with three variant covers. They're going to give you a price based on uh, 250 or whatever the quantity is per book times four or whatever. It's going to be 500 of the main cover and then 200, 200, 100. Yes, it adds up to a thousand. Uh, so you have to look at what the numbers break out to be. Um, if you're doing a purely digital printed job, uh, even if you're doing it for Mixam, they don't give you the price break that I, that I think that they should. Um, I may reach out to Mixam and try to have them help us at some point with that. Uh, that's just a restriction that they have working through their uniform system. Um, if we if we gave them a ton of work, they might be negotiable to do something like that, but they don't normally. So that that's a drawback you have to look at. Make sure your printer understands if you're doing three different covers, and to you it seems like not a big deal or four or whatever. You need to discuss it with the printer because it may be a big deal to the printer. If they're doing it offset, what we would normally pay is a two hundred and fifty dollar change every time we did a second cover. So if we did a thousand copies, the price would be X. And then if we're going to do a thousand copies, but hey, we're doing two different covers. This one we have 200, that one we have 800, this one we have 500, or that one we have 500. Um, you're going to pay them a $250 setup charge normally. Normally, though, with digital printing, uh, it's not a lot of extra setup for them. So they kind of can just give you a bulk price, even if you have two or three different covers, if you follow what I'm saying. I'm sure you do. Um, you got to talk about it with the specific printer. There's another printer called Kablam Printing I've heard really good things about. Uh, I don't know anyone in Comicsgate who has used them. So uh, although I do know people outside Comicsgate uh, or just not part of the community that uh, have used them and say good things about them, and you just have to Google, Google Kablam Printing. I'll stick them uh, with a link in the description as well. And you can ask them the price, excuse me, the question about the price for variant covers. Um, one thing I wanted to mention to you as well, uh, if quotes are too high for printing, if they seem too high, um, no matter what you're trying to do, communicate with them about what you're trying to do and accomplish. Sometimes they're too high because, you know, you want to do a 150 page book and, you know, a short run that's digital. It's very expensive to do that. Um, sometimes it's, you know, you want to do a hardcover because you really, really want to, but you're not selling enough to justify it. Well, talk to your printer and say, hey, listen, I can't afford this, but this is what I really wanted to do. Sometimes they'll be just really generous with you and give you a crazy price break you don't deserve. Uh, or sometimes they'll recommend an alternative to you uh, or, or they'll get creative because they know their equipment really well, really, really well, really well. So they can come up with ways of accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish from a perceived value standpoint for the customer. Um, that also is not is something that they are, are good with and they can handle um, themselves. For example, with respect to a hardcover, sometimes a printer would give you a, a break on doing a hardcover if they happen to do make the hardcover, the bindery part, we call it, uh, in-house at, at that place. And if they're always like have downtime on their bindery. So there are specific, there are things I can tell you generally, but there are specific things about specific situations with a printer uh, that only they know what's going on in their specific manufacturing facility. So if you need a favor, if you're looking to do something amazing with a cover, but you don't know what you can afford, tell them that. Tell them that and ask, let them become part of the solution. It'll also help you build your relationship with your vendor. Mixam has an online pricing quote, but they have a real human being uh, who lives in the UK who runs the operation. She's very nice and uh, she'll talk to you. You know, you tell her what you're trying to do. In addition to this variant cover thing, maybe hit her up with that again. Say, come on, Adam says, do us a favor, okay? She knows who Adam is. They're nice people. Um, overprinting. Don't go berserk with overprinting. That's my notes I wrote down here to tell you guys. Don't go berserk overprinting. A friend of mine printed Sullivan Slugger, Sluggers, published that book. He printed like an, a hardcover book, 200 pages, and it was so cheap he overprinted like 5,000 copies, which sat in storage for a few years. Uh, and it was getting to be painfully expensive after a while. 
the thing is when you you know you go into this business and you realize oh it costs um, x amount of dollars to print a thousand copies of this comic book why wouldn't i just print four thousand well because you do have to store these things and you know even if it's just sticking them in your house you know you you should not just have boxes and boxes and boxes of comic books in your house even if they are they're books that you love and you maybe you'll do something with them someday have a plan figure out how you're going to sell whatever you're going to overprint in the next this is your limit two years that's it 24 months two years do not print this without a plan to have all of them gone in within two years because otherwise it's just too much stuff and it sits around forever have i ever made that mistake Yes, I've made every every one of these mistakes. Even using a printer who didn't know what comics were. Did I? Uh, yeah, I, I not really. I, the books came out good anyway, but it wasn't it wasn't necessary. I made that mistake. I've made all these mistakes before. Why should you have to make these mistakes? Totally unnecessary. All right. So just when you're overprinting, yes, it's usually cheaper to overprint, but you know those extra copies are, are pretty cheap. But still. It does cost money to print. It costs money to ship those extra books to you. Um, so you, you don't want to overprint. Uh, don't, don't do that. Um, all right. Well, there are a lot of other things that I could tell you about. These are the basic things I want you to be aware of. You know, really, oh, uh, you know, just, just be careful with what you're doing. Uh, one other big note, all right, is about fulfillment. Just... Printers do do fulfillment. Some of them do, or they have a relationship with a fulfillment company. But keep in mind, again, printers are not usually producing collectibles. They're not usually producing merchandise. If they're producing comics and books and they say, well, we do fulfillment, you're closer, but you're not necessarily there yet. So I would really recommend to you, unless we, we test and we don't have this yet, if we test and we have in place a fulfillment solution that's associated with a printer that we can depend on, like we, we like Mixam, but we don't have Mixam for fulfillment yet. Mixam does, I've talked to them. They do have a relationship with a fulfillment uh, company, but it's not figured out yet. So there, you have to be really, really, really careful. Printers usually produce throwaway junk mail items or business cards or catalogs. And if they're doing fulfillment, it means that they are putting them in, um, you know, bulk mail, junk mail, throwaway garbage. So they're not used to handling collectible, high-end, must-be-perfect condition comic books. It has to be uh, discussed and gone over really, really meticulously. And I would recommend you really handle your fulfillment on your own until we have a common resource that we all can trust. It's not that terrible. Uh, to do fulfillment. Uh, even, even Van Skyver has done all, some of his own fulfillment. Clint has done his own fulfillment. Um, John Malin's about to do his own fulfillment for Graveyard Shift 2. Um, we will have a solution for this, I promise you, but for the time being, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, we'll do, I'll do another video on fulfillment. I just wanted to also uh, warn you, the same problem happened, by the way, similar problem happened with um, Zach on his, uh, Richard Meyer on his uh, Graveyard Shift 1. At graveyard shift one sorry that was <laughs> okay zach had a problem with uh, jawbreakers one where he trusted the printer on fulfillment just a little bit too much and uh, the printer meant well but the packaging was wrong and there were a lot of problems all right so don't trust any printers on fulfillment right now that's my best uh, advice with that handle it yourself and uh, in the future we'll come up with a resource for it all right, I hope this was a helpful video to you. Be sure to subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Uh, I will definitely have more videos for you. I want to see comments below. Let me know any other questions you have about printers. Um, I will do a separate video on fulfillment, but not uh, today. Um, and again, I, I will see you soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.